Hi, my name is Youssef, and today I have a special guest with me. It's Jordan from High Touch. Hi, Jordan. Youssef, great to see you again. Likewise. So can you introduce yourself to the audience? Yeah, for sure. Hi, folks. My name is Jordan. I am a solutions engineer here at High Touch, basically a platform for data activation getting data from the lake house like Databricks into SaaS application tools, things like HubSpot and Salesforce or CRM use cases or Braze and Iterable for marketing automation and over 200 different destinations we have in the catalog. So getting data from, you know, uh, lake houses into SaaS applications. I work on the SE team uh, for that org. Amazing. Amazing. So can you tell me more about Hightouch? Yeah, for sure. So HighTouch essentially is this, again, data activation platform that's really meant for you to collect, prepare, and activate data around the warehouse and the lake house, especially for platforms like Databricks. Um, we have things across both ingestion, identity resolution, and sort of reverse CTL, but our core offering is for that reverse CTL, again, getting data from the lake house into SaaS application tools, maybe even other databases or downstream use cases for business teams, things like marketing, sales, finance, et cetera. And that's what we'll focus today's conversation on, but mainly around reverse ETL. Amazing. And I may have heard that you have a presentation for us. We do. We have a little presentation prepared as well as a small demo to walk through just like how you could spin up these pipelines um, really easily in a couple clicks and, and just hopefully make it pretty idiot proof, which is why I'm able to do it so well in today's demo, as you'll see. Awesome. So the floor is yours. Awesome. Sounds good. But I'm going to share my screen here and just dive into what the actual high touch platform is at a high level, just the architecture of it. And then we'll talk about um, how to actually build out these pipelines in real time. And so as I mentioned before, high touch is this data activation platform primarily, but it serves all sides of the data lake house, right? We have everything from collecting data into the lake house itself, preparing data within the lake house. So actually unifying profiles, creating sort of these, these unified identities, and then activating those customer data, those identities downstream into other applications using tools like reverse ETL. So we sort of serve all layers of this stack, but I do want to zoom in on this activation portion on the right, in particular, reverse ETL. And so for this, it's simply the process of replicating data from your lake house into downstream application tools without the hassle of de dealing with these third-party APIs, dealing with these specs, and, and sort of um, you know updating and maintaining these pipelines over time. These are really tedious um, uh, data engineering tasks we want to abstract away for teams to make it really seamless and um, you know hopefully just an enjoyable experience. So I'll focus in on that today. Uh, what I do want to call out as well is that both High Touch and Databricks have a huge number of joint customers already to this day. A few of them actually leaned out on the side here. Major logos across both B2B and B2C are represented here. Uh, and so you know hopefully this is a very trustworthy partnership and alongside that, Databricks has invested heavily in high touch in previous rounds we've had. So this partnership is only growing and uh, our integrations only become stronger because of the both, you know, the ties we have here, both on an executive level and an engineering level uh, between our teams. But that's about it. That's like the introduction to high touch. I'm actually going to switch over to the application now and walk through a use case of taking data from Databricks, maybe just like users or just a simple audience list and sticking that downstream to a tool like Salesforce, a CRM tool and show you how easy that process really is. So just before you show us uh, yeah. the demo, can you please emphasize uh, uh, or on the part where you connect Databricks to high touch yeah. and also uh, tell us whether high touch support Unity catalog or not yet? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, the answer is yes to both those things and I'll showcase them here. Um, Marvelous. Awesome. Yeah, of course. See them out here? Yeah. We're now within the high touch platform where we have a multitude of capabilities, but the core thing we'll focus on again is as a pipeline building from Databricks um, to a tool like Salesforce. But before we actually get into that pipeline and sync creation process, as we call it, we'd have to connect to our Databricks lake house and those destinations first, right? And so we see here our customer data platform for Databricks. If we were to click into something like this, we could see both like the uh, necessary credentials needed to actually log in to this resource, right? Just in terms of just like our actual login, the schema that we want to uh, access, as well as a unique candidate log that we want to access as well. So essentially, you within Databricks plug in that Unity catalog that you want to sort of access data from, and we give you access to all the schemas underneath that, the data and AI assets that you want to access and eventually send downstream 
So we do support Unity Catalog in our Databricks connection here as well. Awesome. Perfect. Yeah. Any questions on that, Yusuf? All good? No, all good. Cool. And on the other side here as well, we do have a Salesforce connection as well. I've got a number of destinations that we have connected into our workspace right now, but we'll focus in on Salesforce somewhere in this list as well. So let's say we were building a pipeline from Databricks into Salesforce again to pull that audience list out and push it into the platform. How would we go about that process? Well, the first thing we would do is to find what data we actually want to pull out of Databricks to eventually send downstream. To do that, we define a model. I'm going to create a new one here. I'm going to select my Databricks platform here. And then I can define that data in a few different ways, right? I can use SQL and just write natively on top of the Databricks. Hey, here's the actual query I want to pull. I can use a materialized table or view that already exists inside of Databricks today, or from leveraging a transformation tool like DBT or a, you know, a, power, a BI yeah. tool like Look or Sigma, and I want to leverage those investments, I can do that as well. Uh, and all of that, of course, sitting in your lake house in addition. So these are all available for you. Of course, I think we'll just focus in on materialized table for now for simplicity's sake. Awesome. I'm going to drop down here of all the different uh, tables that exist inside my lake house today. I'm going to grab one for all users. I can just preview what that looks like very quickly so I can validate this is indeed the data I want to pull from Databricks and eventually send downstream. So all these fields look good to me. I'm going to call this my Salesforce users. So we'll be setting it downstream to Salesforce eventually. And that's it. We've defined what data we actually want to pull out of Databricks, right? That's the model we defined. Now we say, hey, what destination should that be sent to? What fields should be mapped downstream? How often should that data be refreshed? from Databricks into Salesforce. And we can define that all here in a sync. So I'll select my destination. And then we'll configure the sync of how I want this data to actually arrive within Salesforce. I'm going to say I'm going to sync this to the context object that exists within my Salesforce instance. I'm going to choose to upsert these records. So I'll update existing records as well as insert net new ones that come from Databricks. And then importantly, I'll be able to declaratively map which columns from my Databricks model should manifest as which fields within my Salesforce uh, context instance, right? And so what we see here is this declarative mapping system to make that exactly clear. So things like email, first name, last name, these columns from Databricks will appear exactly as the first name, last name, email or fields rather within Salesforce. And I get a very explicit um, sort of control over how that arrives in Salesforce here. And again, this is way less complex than dealing with these third-party APIs via Python script or Airflow or whatever it is. And this is totally managed for you and abstracted away when using a platform like HiTouch. Folks, that's about it. There's a few more advanced configurations, but the last thing that we set here is how often this data should be refreshed in that destination. I can trigger it manually in the application here. Just click the Run button in the UI. I can have it done programmatically via API or even different like an orchestration uh, layer. Airflow, DAX, or stuff like that. This can be included in your overall DAX that you build out with Databricks, with ETL, with reverse ETL. Or if you want to set some recurring schedule, you can as well. So once every minute, once every hour, once every week, and this will automatically take care of the data refreshes for you from your Databricks instance that updated data into a tool like Salesforce. Click manual here. And we'll simply run this sync and kick this off. So all this data will begin hydrating from our modeled instance within Databricks into a platform like Salesforce. If anything should go awry during this process, you have alerts built on the platform as well. Text, Slack, email notification, so you can proactively monitor the health of these syncs as they're actually being sent downstream. So you're always on top of these pipelines and the health of them overall. Um, there's quite a bit more to say on the platform overall, but I know we're coming up on time. I wanna keep this short and sweet for the crowd here. Yusuf, if there's any questions, feel free to let me know. Um, but that's how to build pipelines from Databricks into SaaS tools in about you know a few minutes. Well, everything looks clear. Seems very easy to use. So sounds perfect to me. Uh, I believe I just have one more question: is if someone yeah. want to try uh, high touch, is there any trial period or to whom? Uh, should he or she or they reach out in case they have yeah. questions? For sure, yeah. For trial period, absolutely. You go to the Hydro website right now and, and sign up for one of our free tier plans where you can try out the platform, try out some destinations, build some syncs on your own and, 
and really get hands on with the product. And should you want a you know more scalable solution or more enterprise focused features, I'll say, um, some of the advanced functionality that we have, you can of course reach out to me directly on LinkedIn. I'm sure you still able to link my contact information or reach out on the demo page uh, on our website. You'll get in touch with one of our uh, you know product experts and we can align from there. But this has been super helpful, Yusuf. And thank you for having me on in the first place. Um, I'm super glad to have you. And I was very, very happy to understand how high touch works. And I'll make sure to add all the useful links in the description of the video. Thank you, Jordan, uh, for being my uh, my host. No, not I'm the host. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for uh, for showing how to use high touch. I'm pretty sure uh, we'll have a lot of interaction, and I will make sure to send all the folks to you. And uh, see you soon. That's all, my man. Thanks so much. Bye.